In this video, I'm going to work out one related rates example. Um, and here I'm just going to start with a general strategy of what you ought to do when you approach a related rates problem. First off, you're going to need to read the problem and define the given and what you're asked to find, as well as probably drawing a picture. That's going to be a very helpful thing to do. You're then going to need to relate the variables that you have together. Generally, this is going to be in some type of formula. If you're dealing with a cone, it'll be maybe the volume of the cone. If you're dealing with a cylinder, it might be the surface area of the cylinder, perimeter of maybe something, a uh, fence or an object or something along those lines. Um, you're then going to implicitly differentiate with respect to time because of relayed rates problems. Um, you're usually asked to find a rate um, at a given point in time and there's an, uh, probably going to be another rate in the problem somewhere else that they have given you. So you're differentiating with respect to time and it will be implicit differentiation. And then you should at that point then simplify your equation. You're going to be down to things to where you can finally plug in what you know, your known values, and then solve to answer the question. Alright, so in this example we're going to be taking a look at a cone problem. Okay, so um, a tank of water in the shape of an inverted cone is leaking water at a constant rate of 2 cubic feet per hour. Okay, the radius of the base of the tank is 5 feet, the height of the tank is 14. At what rate is the depth of the water in the tank changing when the depth of the water is at 6 feet? Okay, now there's lots of information in there that is important. All right, obviously we know inverted cone, so we know our shape. All right, and then you've got to pick up on the words, is leaking water, all right, at a constant rate of the 2 cubic feet per hour. But if it's leaking, then it's really negative 2 feet per hour, okay, 2 cubic feet per hour. All right, so I can do given... I am given the fact that, and then hopefully you can recognize that this is cubic feet per hour. All right, what's actually changing here is going to be the volume in the tank because that's volume. All right, so I'm given dv over dt as a negative 2 cubic feet per hour. All right, and then it's asking me at what rate is the depth of the water or the height of the water, depth of the water, and so it's asking for a rate. Depth of the water is changing when, the when part is important, the depth of the water is at 6 feet. All right, so then my find is dh, the change in the height, the change in the depth of the water, so dh dt, when h equals 6 feet. Okay, now let's go ahead and draw our picture at this point, inverted cone. Alright, and the radius of that cone, uh, where was that? Five feet right there. Okay, so I know that's five feet. And the height is 14. So from here all the way down to here. Alright, that's 14 feet. Alright, and then we are dealing with volume, we're dealing with a cone. Alright, so at that point then we've got the formula for the volume of a cone as V equals one-third pi r squared h. Alright, now at this point, alright, you need to be focusing on this, and you're looking at this, I've got an h, I've got an r, and I've got a v. Alright, Whenever you've got this scenario and I'm trying to find the dh dt, it's going to be a whole lot easier if I put this equation all in terms of t because I'm trying to find a dt dh. All right, so I can do that using a proportion and writing the relationship between this radius and this height. All right, and we usually do that with a proportion. So I can do the radius over the height is equal to what the radius actually is, 5, over what the height actually is, which is 14. I can cross multiply down <clears throat> and choose to solve for r because I want to replace r here so that I've got everything in terms of h. So then I would have a 14r equals a 5h. And if I divide both sides by 14, then I would have r equal to 5 over 14h. 
Okay, and that's definitely what you're going to want to do because you're going to want to substitute this in. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go V equals, I've got the one third pi, now I'm going to substitute R in, so 5 fourteenths H, the whole entire thing quantity squared times another H. Okay, now at this point, we just want to simplify this equation the best we can. Okay, so we're going to take 5 fourteenths, we're going to square that, and then multiply it by one third. All right, at this point, if you wanted to check it, you could pause the video and use calculator. It turns out to be V equals 25 over 588, and then I still have a pi, and I had h squared here times another h, which is going to give me an h to the third. Now, if you can get to that point right there, then you it's the same steps from there on out. All right, at this point, now that you've got your simplified formula, you can now implicitly differentiate with respect to time, plug in the things you know, and then solve for that unknown. Okay, so now I'm going to start the actual calculus, and actually this is the only calculus in the entire problem right here, is where I take this equation and I implicitly differentiate it with respect to time. So that V is going to be a dV over dt. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that 25, 588 in front there, because I'm going to differentiate over here. Pi, differentiating here with power rule, 3 times h squared. Now don't forget the with respect to time you have a chain dh dt. Okay, a little bit of arithmetic. Okay, if you wanted um, you could simplify here or at this point you could just go ahead and directly start plugging things in if you want. That's fine too. Um, let's do that. We know dv dt because they gave it to us. We know the height is going to be at 6 feet and we're trying to find dh dt. So all, our, all of our variables there are going to be good to deal with. So this is a negative 2 cubic feet over 1 hour. I'm just going to go ahead and, well, here, let's go 3 times 25 is going to be 75 pi over 588. Might as well simplify a little bit as we go. All right, now we're going to put in the height, and to make sure that we get our labels right at the end, I'm actually going to put 6 feet in and then square it, and then dh dt. Okay, now when I square this, I'm going to get a 36 squared, but then I'm also going to get a feet squared. Okay, so do a little bit more math here. So we'll have two negative two cubic feet per hour on this side. Simplifying all of this, that's 36 times 75. There again, you can do this on a calculator. Um, 2700 pi feet squared all over 588 times dh dt. All right, now we've got a nice little simple equation here, one-step equation. Something's being multiplied by what I want to solve for, so I'm going to divide by this. And dividing by a fraction is um, easy to just multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to come up here and do that. So I'm going to be multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to leave the negative 2 feet cubed over 1 hour alone, multiplied by the reciprocal here, which would put my 588 in the top. It's going to put my 2700 pi feet squared in the bottom, and then equals dh dt. So then as soon as I solve this over here, then I'll have my dh dt. Okay, so um, obviously at this point we can do some crossing out. I've got feet squared in the bottom, and that's going to go, I've got three of them in the top, so I'll just be left with one. All right, that's an obvious one. Uh, two goes in there. You know, even, these are both even, so you can find lots of simplification there. I will leave that to you to do uh, with a calculator. Um, the final answer then is a negative 98 over 225 pi feet per hour. And that's my dh dt. Okay, and then usually what I do is I have my students write a therefore statement that kind of concludes or summarizes what we just did in this related rates problem. So for instance, and you could write it one of two ways. If I want to use this as a negative, then I would just say the depth of the water in the tank is changing at a rate of negative 98 over 225 pi feet per hour 
when the water is at 6. All right, or if I don't want to say it with a negative, it's decreasing at a positive rate because that negative is just telling us that it's decreasing because it's leaking out. So let's do this. At 6 feet, and that's kind of vague, when the depth of the water is at 6 feet, the depth of the water is changing at a rate of negative 98 to 25 pi feet per hour. Kind of a little vague sentence there, you know, at six feet. When the depth of the water is at six feet, the depth of the water is changing at a rate of negative 98 over 20, 225 pi feet per hour. And that means since it is a negative rate that it is decreasing. The height is decreasing in the tank because it's leaking out. All right, so there is um, one cone example. Cone examples, as far as related rates go, seem to be the hardest part, and it's because people forget to, to make sure this equation, we don't want the R and the H, we want to get it down to just one letter, and preferably the letter we're trying to find right here. So DH, DT, if I was trying to find DR, DT, then I would have solved for H, and then been able to plug that in so that the equation would have been in terms of R. Okay, but really in all honesty, a related rates problem, the only calculus in the entire problem is right here when you get your simplified geometric version and then you are taking the derivative implicitly with respect to time. That's the only calculus in this entire problem. So definitely, thanks for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.